Hello, I'm Oscar Garcia, director of Watermap. This is a video summary of the activities carried out during our last research cruise at the MC20 site on the Gulf of Mexico on April 2018. Hi, Dana Tulis here from uh, Coast Guard Headquarters Incident Management Preparedness Director. And I've been here with Noah and Oscar Garcia for the last two days looking at the uh, plume coming off from MC-20A. And uh, I believe yesterday it was about 13 miles long and today's, or actually I think it was 17 miles long yesterday and about 13 miles long today. And so what I wanted to ask you, Oscar, was do you have any way of estimating what be coming out of the source as a, re as a result of what we've seen in the last two days? Yeah, that's, that's uh, exactly what we are trying to address. And the way we are doing it is firstly uh, looking at satellite imagery. Today we are actually using drifters. Uh, we are timing. The, 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 the collection of the satellites with the displacement of this drifter to estimate how to monitor how rapidly the oil moves on the surface. So that's one of the main questions. How how long the oil lasts on the surface and how thick is the oil there to estimate the volume. So as you have seen it, uh, the oil changes, the oil thickness changes rapidly and, and it's very heterogeneous and it changes as, as the wind uh, blows and, and we have wave action. That's one very important uh, question. Uh, uh, we have been here, five, we are about five hours after we deployed the drifter and we, we, we start seeing the effect of the wind on the, on the oil that, that where we are right now. We have had five hours of, of evaporation and, and weathering. So we have to pay attention to these things when we estimate the thickness or, and the volume of oil. And how exactly does a drifter work? How is it actually being able to follow the crew along with us? Yeah, the, the, what happens is this drifter, hydro, uh, it's been a lot of studies uh, to see the hydrodynamic behavior of, of this uh, instrument. And it, it, it's not that it follows the, the oil, but it actually behaves as oil. Oh. So, so what we are assuming is that it's, it's, it's going to follow the same direction and, and, and the same speed as the oil is being transported. Something very important, we are using UAS and we've been uh, uh, using the drone footage to monitor const constantly where the, where the location of the, of, the, of the drifter is in reference to the oil. And something very interesting, as you have seen it, the drifter, five hours after, is still inside the slick, which has been a very interesting experiment we, we have seen. And I think I also saw some samples being taken as well, so that's to help to correlate or validate what the uh, what we're seeing today. Correct. Yeah. So the samples are going to the samples are being collected specifically to measure the thickness of the oil on different locations, and and uh, that helps us to 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 understand what thickness values we have to apply in the satellite images to understand you know how much oil is out there. Yeah. So we are five miles away from the source and we are collecting still samples of water where we still see some accumulation of thick oil. And I'm here with, with Dan Han and Lisa Dapinto who are collecting samples. What are we doing here, Dan? Well, here what I've got, I don't know if you can see it in there, but I've got a, a jar here that's uh, pre-acidified. So it'll preserve the sample as I collect it. And this is gonna be some, as you described, weathered oil uh, that we've tracked down using the surface uh, drifter, so we know the age and distance that this oil has traveled from the source. Lisa, okay. you want to, while I collect it, you want to talk about what we're going to use that for? Yeah, we're just doing some uh, research and methods development here to try to understand what happens to oil as it surfaces from the bottom and then is uh, moves along the ocean uh, at the surface and is affected by uh, wind and wave energy, and in particular by UV light. 
So we are going to be analyzing these floating sheen samples for uh, weathering products in the oil and um, in particular something called oxygenated hydrocarbons or something that we're going to be looking for and that helps us understand how the oil will affect organisms potentially. Are they more or less toxic than fresh oil? Or potentially they may affect how the oil moves as it mixes into the shallow surface mixing layer of the water. Okay, so then how would you describe the oil that we are seeing here? Do you think it's, uh, it's a, a below the sheen level or or do you see some this, accumulation? This is definitely above a uh, This is a sheen level that we would care about and be concerned about. We did tox yeah. tests already during the Deepwater Horizon. Uh, damage assessment that shows even thin sheens are toxic to these early life stages of organisms that are in the yes. vicinity. Based on the description of colors and aspect of oil that we talked about earlier, would you say that this is uh, below one micron or above one micron? Well, you, you know, as the boat's drifting towards the oil, you know, we were very careful not to collect oil that was accumulating along the boat, but as it moves towards the boat, you can really see it building up along the side of the boat. Yep. And that, that seems to say that there's a substantial accumulation of oil on the surface here. Yep. Um, I would guess it's over a micron. Um, it's such a consistent sheen. Well, here's definitely some swirly patches coming through. Um, and that's and just, definitely yeah. representing some thicker oil. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Hello, I'm Oscar Garcia from Water Mapping. I'm here with George Grattinger from NOAA, from, with Lisa Dapinto, and with uh, colleagues from the Coast Guard as well. Uh, the cameraman is uh, Dr. Dan Han from NOAA. And we have a UAS, we have a UAS on the air right now, and at this exact time, we have a satellite snapshot that's uh, been taken on this area, uh, and we have a drifter, as Dan is pointing out right now, that drifter was released at 8.40 this morning. So we've been three, three hours, 20 minutes since deployment. We are about four miles southwest from, from, from the deployment. And we are collecting synoptic UAS video. As you can see here on the screen, that's, uh, that's how the, uh, the, the UAS is capturing the location of the boat and this patch of oil that is in front of the oil. Um, do you want to ask George any questions about what he thinks about the soil or what are your As thoughts? As Dr. DePinto discussed earlier, there is, in this thin oil, there is very uniform coverage uh, across the entire area, essentially, as far as we can see. Uh, what do you think about this oil right here, George? Again, oil collecting against the side of the hull as we move through it, compressing the oil. Would you, would you think that this corresponds to the lower range of the bone agreement point, point 0.3 microns, or you think it's above that range? It very much seems like it's more than that range. Yeah. Additional activities during this cruise included the deployment of a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. The ROV had a fluorometer, and this instrument monitors the presence and saturation of oil submerged under the slick. And this is useful to see the level of oil concentrations as we move away from the source. For example, we are looking to answer questions like, is there more or less oil submerged under the slick as the oil gets emulsified? And we are also using this equipment because we are looking to quantify the ratio of oil that is submerged versus the amount of oil that is floating on the surface. One more activity we carried out during this cruise was the collection of oil samples for chemical analysis. In this particular case, we used the UAS to position the vessel right at the location where the oil reaches the surface. This UAS real-time capability allows us to sample oil from several independent oil slick origins, or so-called OSOs, 